I've asked myself a lot, what is the purpose of an architect? <laughs> and I'm constantly asking myself that question. And I think it is to try and shape a better world, um, a built, better built environment, use less resources, create more comfortable spaces. And we can design these things and go, yes, in theory, they're going to operate well, but unless you have something that comes along and quantifies that it actually is doing that, then how do we know that we're achieving more sustainable outcomes? So the purpose for today is to come in here and go through working as an integrated design team and testing, you can find out where you're going right and where you're going wrong and figure out where there's room for improvement because it's actual real world verification. This house wasn't a simulated house. We weren't trying to achieve passive house. We weren't trying to achieve a 10 star NatHERS rating. Really what we did was sit down, listen to the client and try and deliver them the best house that we can within the brief. Linden's in the, the foothills of the Blue Mountains, so it can get really quite cold, but in summer, we're right close to Penrith and it can get very steaming hot. Now, the, the two pavilions that were here as the original building, they were lovely little pavilions, but the client just wasn't comfortable in them. In winter, they couldn't keep warm, and in summer, they were just boiling. So when they came to us, they said, we actually want to have a really high performance thermal home. We want somewhere where our family is gonna be really comfortable. And what we said was, let's actually deconstruct these existing dwellings, and link them together so you create one high performance thermal building that just respects the site. It just says, we're gonna use what we've got here and make it as highly thermal efficient building as we possibly can. We started this uh, project with Alexander Symes architect and initially what he wanted to do was uh, he wanted to carry out a two test. Uh, I want to compare the NADIS rating for a building A and building B, so which is pretty much testing how good the envelope is. What the NADIS does is it sort of works out how much additional energy you would need for you to be comfortable in the house. So that obviously relates to the level of insulation and the glazing performance and also the orientation of the building and the local climate. You model it and it, it tells you um, in terms of the star rating how good the thermal envelope is. What we've really concentrated on here is having a small window to wall ratio where the glazing concentrates out on this beautiful view looking over Sydney. You can actually see the Harbour Bridge on a clear day. And the idea is having these high performance AWS thermally broken windows that mean that you've got these massive expanses of glass that look out to that lovely view. But then where you don't need the view, we've actually put in a really high performance thermal envelope with a very large insulation so we've actually got 7 R value in the roof we've got a 6.1 R value in the walls and we've got a 4 R value in the floor it's a big leap in terms of uh, the NATO's uh, outcome for the building so uh, what we had before was 2.9 stars NATO's and we managed to improve that to 7.6 stars NATO's and if you look at that over a year that's equivalent of taking four SUVs off the road so you're saving a lot of energy through having that high performance and we have um, a saying in the industry that you don't build a tight house by accident. You've got a plan to do it. So we're finding more progressive builders and architects are talking to us to sort of get their houses tested to sort of see if they can improve their, their building techniques. It's very common in the UK and Europe um, where you talk about air changes per hour at 50 pascals pressure being the measure of how much air you lose through your house. And in the UK they have 10 air changes per hour which means every six minutes, you're reconditioning the air within your house. In the UK, 10's considered pretty poor. You need to be below a seven before you get a happy customer. You look at the US, we're down in Florida, which has got temperatures very similar to Sydney, and their air changes are three. So it's, it's very pertinent to warm climates as it is to cold climates. We think that in future, the regulation will, will catch up and then you know, uh, the test like this will be a, a regular thing in the building codes and then every new house, residential house that's built, they quite undergo building pressure testing. So we ran a negative pressure today. So what it's doing is drawing the air out of the house. And as it draws the air out, the fan and the computer measure the change in air pressure within the building. So it can then turn around and calculate the amount of air which is coming in. And that gives you your air changes per hour. And then I can go around with the thermal camera which picks up where the leaks are. It'll also pick up 
thermal bridges so it'll show that there's something maybe wrong in the roof or it can pick up uh, it missed insulation, a whole pile of things. And then you can go and fix the problems. We tried really hard on this building to make sure we seal it, we make sure we insulate it. Um, but when today we saw that when you've got the thermal camera, there is places where there is thermal bridges. We've seen with the pressure test that we're not actually meeting the world's best practice when it comes to uh, air infiltration. So this has been a really great thing to come in here and, and go, how do we need to change our behaviors and our detailing and our work with all the consultants to make sure that we're not only meeting those minimum requirements, but we're pushing things forward for a more sustainable outcome. There's been times when places like Penrith have gone up to 47 degrees. So it's expected that those peak temperatures will actually go up to 50 degrees in the next two decades. Therefore, as building professionals across the whole board, not just in fancy houses, but in the minimum cost houses, we need to figure out how we can design, how we can construct, and how we can test to make sure that the people can be comfortable for 95% of the year without any need for air conditioning. And then on those really peak times, they can turn on that air conditioning and be able to not use too much energy because they've got a high performance envelope.